pitch Akira stuck in my head all week. How'd y'all like that Super Bowl performance? I thought it was really good. Uh, hi, Jeff here, Tropical Plants Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I uh, don't know why I'm starting my vlog in the car because I don't really think I can vlog where I'm going. Oh, it's because I wanted to show the palm trees. Don't they look great? All covered in snow? That's what you want to see. It's fantastic. Also, this juniper. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's gonna be able to hang around much longer. We had a little bit of snow, not too much, not anywhere near what they were predicting, but it started off like ice. It was just uh, almost hail, because it was big, big chunks of ice for like 15 minutes. I was out driving while it was happening. The car started to go off the road. I was going around a turn, and it was like, nah, I feel like going straight, and uh, everything was fine. It cooled down a little bit. It was 74 degrees just a few days ago, and now here we are. 29 and you know what i don't mind it if it's gonna snow and at least be pretty outside it's all right and the roads are fine now so it's like eh, no big deal uh is there a point there's no point to any of this do you guys know where are you going okay it was a car with a delivery thing on top i didn't know bread code delivery sorry panera it's called st louis bread co in st louis but it's called panera everywhere else i don't know if it started here i don't know what that's about i didn't know they delivered like the most insignificant thing to put into a vlog, but I just, I don't know. I thought that was interesting. I bet that's expensive. That place is already pricey as it is. Last time I went there, it was like 17 bucks for a sandwich, a salad, and a drink. What the heck's that all about? Get in your lane. I could go out to eat somewhere for that much money. Um, I'm at a nursery. I don't think I'm going to be able to vlog in here though, so I guess I'm just like rubbing it in your face. My bad. Sorry. Oh, I love their little topiaries they have out there. It's winter, so there's like nobody in these places, so vlogging's really weird and awkward. Uh, but we'll see. I want to find an asparagus fern, a plumosa. They're not a hard-to-find plant, but it's winter and nobody really has anything. But this place, they usually have some terrarium plants. They get some moss and stuff too. Yeah, I see. Look, I saw... Yes, I just got caught vlogging. It's fine. It's no big deal. Okay, yeah. See, there's just... There's not a ton to show this time of year. Anyways, they've got some nice little things though. Lots and lots of syngoniums here. It's a little polka dot plant that needs a little bit of, it's not really TLC. It, you can tell it was just cut back, so it's got some growing to do, but it looks good. And then I saw there was something I saw. Oh, some little tiny, little bitty baby crotons. Those are fun. And all kinds of tullians. Yes, they have the red gentsia here. I like those a lot. And look at so much color. That's fun. It's Sometimes it can be hard coming by airplanes this time of year, or really all times of year. I have trouble finding them. Oh, and there's begonias, a nice big philodendron, a zebra plant. I said philodendron, philodendron, and I'm seeing lots of coleus down there. That's a nice selection. Oh, look at that. Tiger ferns. Those are fun. Look, that's enough, though. I'm going to grab what I need and go home. Well, I'm home, and I may have picked up a few new plants. And you don't, you don't want to focus. You're gonna be like that tonight. That's not okay. So my goal was to find an asparagus fern, one of the plumosas. Sorry, I'm gonna turn that fan off. That's probably kind of annoying. Fan off. Anyways, one of the plumosa ferns for a terrarium video that'll be out, and uh, the, should be the video that comes out after this one. I never found it, which is a little bit odd. You know, it's one of the most common terrarium plants out there, right? And it just, I wasn't seeing it around. But I did manage to grab some other things, some other things that I've kind of had my eye out for and thought I'd go ahead and show them to you real quick. I um, did grab another Syngonium Podophyllum. I don't, I have a problem with these plants. It's clear at this point. I, I don't need it. I have so many others. I've really wanted one of the confettis, and I'm thinking that this might be a confetti. When they're small like this, it can be a little bit difficult to really tell, because their colors don't really start to come through all the way until they get a little bit larger, and changes in light and whatnot. But either way, I was like, well, it's pretty, it's speckly. Hopefully it's not one of the illusion varieties, the ones that you see at like Lowe's and Home Depot. Not that I don't like those, but sometimes the illusion i think it's called illusion berry it will start off kind of speckly like this and then as they get bigger you lose that color you just the color starts to go away and the foliage becomes one solid color for the most part you just there's no variety in it so hopefully this is one of the confettis i know there's one they're called pink splash i would really like but that's not what that is more than likely a little croton that i need for a video something that'll be coming out later 
uh, for the most part, this is all just terrarium stuff. A nice little polka dot plant. Don't you just love polka dot plants? It's a little um, scraggly looking, <laughs> but it's one of those things where I was like, hey, you know what? I'll take what I can get because finding terrarium plants at the local nurseries can be a struggle this time of year. I see them a lot during the summertime, but that's when I'm not really looking for them because I'm doing things outside in the garden for the most part, not really inside. So, but I'm so I'm happy to have found it. Then I grabbed a silver lace fern. These are fun for terrariums. Nice texture, good color to them. Just a fun plant, just something I really like to have around. And then I also grabbed what I think is a mini African violet of some sort. It wasn't labeled, but it was with a bunch of other larger African violets. And there were some other smaller ones near this one but those only had one growth coming out of them. This one, you can see there's multiples in here. So I'm thinking uh, there are like some trailers that kind of come up and spread around a little bit. Maybe it's one of those. I don't know. It's That's an issue that I've talked about before on this channel a lot, especially particularly with terrarium plants that it just, I don't understand why they're not usually labeled. I mean, I do understand why it's because the nurseries order them as assorted terrarium plants. But I just I wish we could you stop it. If it weren't for the YouTube thing, it wouldn't bother me as much because I can look at the plants and say, hey, like I generally know what this is, even, even if it's not in focus. Sorry about that. But you know, with the videos, it's nice to be able to say, hey, here's what this is in case somebody else, you know, wants to get that plant and they like that plant. But you can't can't always do that. Uh, another example, this lovely, pretty lush fern here. Its name is Four Inch Tropical. <laughs> Good to know. Not very helpful. Uh, maybe some sort of blechnum. I'm not sure. There's a, I think it's called a silver tree fern, I believe, that I've wanted to get for a really long time. The foliage is very similar to this, and I have been seeing them a lot, like a lot lately. So I don't know if that's what this is or not. I really, I have, there's no way to know for sure. I'll just have to grow it and see what happens with it, and we will see. And then another fern that um, I really probably shouldn't have gotten, but I've wanted one for a long time. So I figured why not give it a shot and just really keep my fingers crossed and hope that everything goes well with it. This is a uh, idiantum. It's a type of maidenhair fern and it's a macrophyllum or macro. It's a large leaf maidenhair fern. I don't really want to touch the leaves too much because I just put some lotion on and these are really sensitive to oils, but they have really big foliage as you can see here and extremely, extremely dainty stems. Like, look at them. They're just like hairs, which is kind of cool. When these get larger, they look so neat. These big leaf, the large leaf maiden hair ferns. But you know, the problem with maiden hair ferns, almost all of them is that they're not very forgiving if they dry out. It can go through a period where they dry out and like the foliage will throw a fit, but then you start watering it again and it tends to bounce back. So they're forgiving in that sense, but they're not forgiving in the sense of if you want to keep them growing progressively and look nice and then not fall to pieces if they get just the slightest bit dry. And that's largely because look, there's no storage in this plant. There's no real room for air. You see that stem? As soon as there's not moisture in there, that's just going to shrivel up. It's not like trees and things that have big thick branches where there's some moisture remaining in there and it takes them longer to dry out they have protection from bark this is a plant that is extremely exposed you could say and just no storage in there no not much water can remain inside those teeny tiny little hair like stems so i am going to do my best to keep it alive it, this might be a great candidate for a self-watering container which isn't something i jump on board with all that often i think it's really good to uh, kind of know your plants and uh, learn the rhythm and what they need to be able to look at them and say hey you need water and whatnot moisture meters are useful but they can also be really problematic sometimes so it's sort of an intuitive thing i think you develop over time but with maiden hair ferns they uh, are kind of just uh, divas they're divas i was trying to think of a word that was appropriate and wouldn't get me demonetized they're beautiful but there's always the downside to that right so i was happy to get it but you know, we'll see what happens with it fingers crossed everything goes okay oh, and i also grabbed some tillandsias Tal this is that's not a tillandsia this is from a parlor palm which i also picked up but i use it for a different video already before i picked up with the vlog these are these are some sort of bulbosa i'm not really sure what the variety you can see this one's a little bit more pale than your typical bulbosa if I'm, I'm i might even have these a little bit backwards those usually have more of a red bract within the flower this one's a little bit more pale and then this other one that's back here 
This one's much more of a vibrant, like, coral color, which I love. I love bright, intense coral-like colors. It's really pretty. And above it, there's another one up here. It's just a Tolianzia. I don't remember what kind. Some arrow something. I'll put it up here on the screen if I can remember. No, this isn't their permanent home. I don't plan on keeping it in the Newton's Cradle. That's just where I set it because I went ahead and gave it a little dunk so it could hydrate. <laughs> now it can just hang out there for a moment. It needed to drip dry, which it pretty much has by now. These are fun to use. And again, terrariums, all sorts of things. You can adhere them to wood and branches. Looks really neat. And I just love them. They're fun to have around. And I haven't seen these, like I said, I think bulbosas in a very long time. I Well, that's not necessarily true. I haven't seen them in flower in a very long time. And uh, I just, it's nice to go ahead and get them when they're in flower. You can kind of cheat a little bit. It's not always the hardest thing to get <laughs> to, I should, this was bad. Bad, I, I did, this is stupid. I should not have put this in here. It's not always the hardest thing to do to get a Tillandsia to bloom, but there's just something nice about getting it when it's already flowering because then you have a better idea of one, what the flower is going to look like. And uh, two, well, that was it. it. That was, there was just one point there. Yeah, just knowing what the flower is going to look like is nice in advance because there are, like with orchids, there are so many different varieties with the, in the different Tillandsias and uh, now all the dip, the sports, the hybrids and whatnot that it's really hard to just look at one and go, oh, I know what that is. I mean, there are some exceptions, like the really common ones. And there was just something about this one specifically that just, I absolutely love the flowers on it. I liked how the foliage leading up here to that bract actually has some color on it which makes sense because you know a bract isn't actually a flower the flowers are teeny tiny little things that are tucked away inside of these segments so this one actually hasn't bloomed yet but i believe it should just be teeny tiny little purple flowers that pop out from each one of these little pieces here yeah the camera's not wanting to focus too much on those little parts but here inside all these little segments flowers pop out you get it you've probably seen tillandsias before any tillandsia that's really shiny like this is going to want more water than something that is more hairy or glaucous that has like a gray color on it there are some that actually are like furry in appearance. Those don't need anywhere near as much water. They'll rot actually if you give them too much. So that's one thing with these that I also like is there's a little bit more forgiveness for heavy-handed waterers like myself. Because I'm a heavy-handed waterer, I'm not going to have to worry as much about overwatering these guys like I do with some of my other ones. And it helps that it's pretty toasty out here in the grow room. You know, things are uh, probably around 82 today and the humidity is 54%, which is actually kind of low for where I like to keep things, but the heater's been running extra strong, so it's pretty cold outside. So that's what happened there. You can see, by the way, things are a little bit more wobbly now. The camera's off the tripod. Tripod? Tripod. Last week and a few other times, I had mentioned an order with Logies, and I just kind of, other things were coming up and making it too hard to work that into a video, but I did say that I would talk about it this week. So... We can go ahead and dive into that. I said in the last vlog, like this isn't like a tea spell or a drama thing, but I placed an order. The plants, some of the plants, not all of them, arrived not looking very good. So uh, we'll go through that. Not all the plants look bad. You'll see what I'm talking about here. Okay, so let's just start with the good. I ordered uh, nine different plants and five of them came in looking pretty good. Uh, some things happen, some things change. Cold damage can take a little while to show up, but here are the plants that look pretty darn good. There are three begonias here, and then the Seneseo up here in the front, and a philodendron lickety split in the back. This one right here is a begonia. The variety is called My Special Angel. There's her tag back there. A special angel. It's an angel wing begonia, one of the fibrous begonias. All these are. It has beautiful speckling on the foliage. It's supposed to be a little bit more compact in size and have really cute, like, tufts of pink flowers. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of foliage, but it has recovered very nicely. The foliage is bouncing back just fine. It was pretty much the only one of the begonias that had any issues, so I'm not too worried about it. And then uh, this is the one that I was really excited about. Look at it. Can you see it? The spots are pink. I suppose it might help if it's not crowded in there with the other one that was behind it. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? This is the begonia whimsy. The whimsy, another fibrous begonia, and the speckling, the spots that are on the foliage are pink, or they have a pinkish hue. It does depend on what angle you're looking at the plant from but it is a like a light 
pink. You can see that a little bit better there. The foliage on these has darkened up quite a bit under my grow lights. So I could probably actually move these to a shelf where the lights are a little bit higher up from the plants. That darkening just that's kind of like a natural sunscreen you could say for the plants their way of saying hey we're getting a lot of light which is okay these can be acclimated into those conditions it arrived doing just fine but uh, okay i can't even talk about it look at how beautiful it is I don't know how well that pink is going to show up on camera but just trust me it is absolutely beautiful i really like the whimsy i have seen these available before from uh, um steve's leaves online uh, but they've been out of stock so when I saw these on a Logi site I went ahead and jumped on it and ordered it because it's just it's so pretty. The foliage on it's nice and healthy it's stiff and doing well the inner stems on the inside are nice and stable so it's a plant that's been doing pretty well you know I placed this order quite a while ago so uh, this is not really representative of what they looked like when they arrived but I do have footage of them from when I unpacked I think almost all of them I think the only one that I don't have footage of was the philodendron that's in the back there and then the next one is a uh, maculata your typical white eye right there whitey whatever you want to call it the most popular of the spotted begonias i would say not very difficult to get a hold of anymore now that costa farms is doing their trending tropicals at least in the u.s should be easier to get a hold of i had one of these for years and it was a long time ago one of my local nurseries would get these maculatas in just like a few of them every single like late spring and they just sold them as fancy begonias. They're like six bucks a pop. So uh, for one year, just grew it as an annual, not realizing it was anything special. And then uh, I got another one. I planted up under one of my Robolini palms and uh, I probably had it for like three or four years. I didn't realize that it was like a special plant because at the time when I would Google like polka dot begonia, be spotted begonia, I wasn't finding anything. As I say that, I realize that that should be the indicator that a plant isn't as common, but you know, back in the day, it wasn't unusual to get online and Google a plant and not find anything. There are a lot of plants out there and I, not to like age myself, but the internet is pretty relatively new. It's only like this last decade that it's really, really exploded with information. Prior to that, it was useful but it wasn't as great so getting to the end of that story i didn't realize it was special my it was probably like almost three feet tall it was getting like really leggy i cut it back looked okay it bounced back some and then the next year i was like i'd rather just pull this out of this pot and i put a peck of stecky's ludia in its place and i'm looking back on that i shouldn't have done that because then here we are you know six years later probably and uh, they have been harder to get a hold of they're not as hard to get a hold of now obviously i mean there's one right here they have them at lowe's i have seen them as annuals still sold as fancy begonias sometimes depending on the nursery but i just i wanted a new one so i got it logis is a family-owned company and it's nice to support them so i it's fine i don't have any issues with that there is no way of knowing that there were going to be those all over the place and then here is the philodendron lickety split let me get a better angle for you at least i'm going to try my best the things are kind of tight out here there's not a lot of wiggle room to move around actually i think i'm just gonna have to take you off the tripod sorry things might be a little shaky the lickety split this is another plant i've had my eyes on for a long time and kind of wanted it's these are now thematophyllums the thematophyllum bipinatifidum formerly philodendron bipinatifidum the solum philodendron which is a very common plant. Now there are different varieties. There's the Hope, which has become popular and easier to get a hold of. It stays smaller. The Hope is also supposedly more cold hardy. And then here is the Lickety Split. Lickety Split just has more splits in the foliage. It's more deeply lobed, you could say, which I think looks really nice. It's like my favorite thing about the Bipinatifidum. And this one has more Bipinatifidum <laughs> characteristics to it. So when I unpacked this, it looked fine but then uh, over the next few weeks the foliage did start to kind of lighten up see the foliage has a little bit of discoloration on it i'm not too worried about it that could be from lots of different things that's probably not even a logis thing but the new foliage is coming out looking great the yellowing can be from too much water deficiencies usually iron some sort of metal um it just erratic conditions in general can uh, cause those things meaning like it you water it consistently then you stop and you change its lighting a lot uh low uh, humidity it can things can start off yellow and then move into a brown from the pattern that's in there that's really this is looking more just like a dead chlorophyll situation so whether or not that's just residual cold damage that took a couple weeks to show up i don't know it's not something i'm concerned about because the new foliage is coming out 
looking great. I fertilize every time I water. I use a quarter strength all purpose. Uh, something I don't recommend everybody doing, but since it's warm out here, things are in active growth, so it's not something I have to worry about too much. But this is a plant that I was also really, I mean, everything I ordered, I was really excited about. But I like my philodendrons a lot, or thematophyllum in this case. Oh, and there's that tag, lickety split philodendron. Awesome plant, really cool house plant. It's just going to have, like I said, deeper lobes within that foliage and uh, have probably a little bit more interest, I would think, because of that. More contrast, more texture, just a fun plant to have around. And next up, Seneseo macroglossus variegatus. This is a variegated wax ivy. And I absolutely love this plant. This is a plant that I uh, had ordered with the hope of doing a designated video on. Actually, several of these were, but, and, well, that all fell to pieces. <laughs> it's on its side because it needs to be bumped up into another pot. I don't want to do any damage to its main stems down in here, so I just have it kind of laying over on its side for the purpose of the video. Uh, where I keep it, it can drape over the edge of a shelf, basically, and it doesn't have any issues. I will pot this up into something larger with some stakes, some support stakes. Uh, probably actually by next weekend now that I have this video coming out I can go ahead and get these guys potted up but it's, it's exactly what it sounds like so, well obviously not actually an ivy it looks an awful lot like it doesn't it and this has been getting a, a pretty hefty amount of light so that's why there's some purple showing up here in the foliage I did go ahead and uh, move this to a spot where it was, the lighting wasn't quite as intense. You can see the new growth has started to respond to that a little bit better. It's not putting out all that purple and whatnot to help protect the foliage. All this white that's on the foliage on here is just DE powder. I put DE powder everywhere like once a month. I talked about that in last week's vlog. Uh, it, it sometimes takes a few waterings to fully get that off the foliage. So that's all that is. This showed up looking great. It's been growing like an absolute champ. I don't have anything bad to say about this plant. These are fantastic plants. They're beautiful, much, much, much more resilient than a standard ivy when growing inside. They're easy to propagate. I don't know. It may get a designated video, so I'm not going to go too far into it, but this is the last of the plants that showed up looking nice. These last few plants, I'm, I'm just going to start off with one that I don't have in front of me. It was a Syngonium podophyllum. It's a, I think the variety's Pixie. There's this super or mini Pixie that I really like. This one's the same, just gets a little bit bigger. You can see here, it didn't look very good to begin with. I trimmed pretty much all of the foliage off of it, potted up in a terrarium and it's recovering. It'll be okay, but not ideal, obviously, right? It's not a lot else to say about that one. Here is the next one. Um, yeah. This is a homolomina. The variety is called Selby. There's its tag right there. These are normally really sturdy, fantastic houseplants. It just that didn't, you can see here, it didn't do well. Here's what it looked like when I impacted it. So, I mean, you could pretty much tell from the get going that it wasn't going to have a very good fate. It's still alive, so that's good, but not exactly looking very hot, right? I was pretty disappointed with that. Not as disappointed as some of the others, but there's, when they don't look good, there just isn't a lot to say about them other than just look at this really sad, crappy looking plant. That's just the way it is. It did initially within probably I'd say a week and a half to two weeks after arriving, start to rot out here in the center, which is alarming. But I went ahead and I pulled all that nasty stuff out. I put a copper-based fungicide down in here and treated it once a week for a few weeks to make sure that that rot wasn't going to spread anywhere. And it hasn't. It also hasn't really put on much of anything in the ways of new growth. There's one leaf down here that's a little bit newer, but that's about it. My guess with this one is that it's probably going to sit still for a while and uh, I will probably start to see new growth from down below but probably nothing coming out the center here since that rotted out. I don't know though, time will tell, we will see. Okay, and here's another cold damaged, beautiful, beautiful plant. This one actually took a while to show the cold damage. It showed up looking kind of okay. I'm not positive I had footage of this one or not when I impacted it. Once the plant started looking kind of bad, I got sort of discouraged and just sort of stopped filming them because I just wanted to get the unpacking done. Yeah, it's a nice philodendron it, when it looks good again it just i don't i don't know what else to say about it i was initially worried when it started to get this 
foliage on there from the cold damage that there was going to be rot in the center of the plant because that's not great obviously but when you peel this sheath back just very gently so you don't want to be very rough with that at all there's still some green in there so uh, there's plenty of hope left for this plant it'll be okay just another monumental disappointment and then another one that i don't have in front of me was a nepenthes and it just right out of the package looked awful as soon as i unwrapped it and looked at it i was like that's going to die i had no doubt about that at all and within like three to five days it was pretty much all brown and i chucked it i'm not keeping plants around that are dead it attracts pests and whatnot so i didn't want that around anymore so it's gone there's nothing to show you it that one just had no hope at all and then here's the last of them this is a uh, tetrasperma rapidophora mini monstera these are i by word of mouth at least terrible shippers you can see looking at this it, it's just it, it wasn't good it didn't ship well and here's what's left of that one not very impressive is it uh, it has started to sprout new growth from down below which okay that's great so it's not dead i there is a root popping through there a little while ago coming out of the soil it's 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 not dead but look at it it's, it's hard to talk about the plants that look terrible because there's not much to say other than just look i mean look no i don't want that so logis does have a 100 percent live arrival guarantee so i took pictures i emailed them i was in communication with them after the plants arrived looking the way that they do as you just saw i went ahead and i emailed them they have a i think it's a 60 day 100 percent like live arrival plant guarantee and their customer service is fantastic they replied very promptly uh, i sent them this email here feel free to pause or whatever you need to do to read that and then just below the email i attached pictures and you can see that that's pretty telling just looking at the pictures there was a problem there right and they of course replied like i said very quickly they were apologetic i mean here's the email they uh, asked me to talk about if the roots were healthy to let them know if the roots looked okay which is a fair question i thought it was a little bit odd to be honest because just from those pictures personally i would think that that's enough for a refund or to send new plants like i said it's okay question i told them the roots look okay everything's still solid roots and the nepenthes are black though and i don't know if that's how they're supposed to look basically if dead or dying that plant i knew was going to die like pretty much immediately and then they replied to that and suggested that i give the plants a week or so to recover and um <laughs> If the plants don't recover within that 60 day guarantee to reach back to them and they would set up a replacement or a refund so uh, that's when i stopped replying and uh, i was just like okay to me like i said before i think that those pictures were more than enough reason to do a refund or a plant exchange the customer service was great they replied very promptly but it, that was a little bit off-putting with the we'll give it a week or so and see how they're doing because here's the thing, I didn't pay for plants that need to recover, right? And uh, that's where that journey ends, basically. It's, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trashing the company. I really like Logis, like I said, never had a problem before, but that was off-putting. And I'm sure had I continued the email exchange and followed up, they would have issued me a refund or something like that, or a plant exchange but uh it just it kind of put a bad taste in my mouth to be honest and i'll still order from them of course because i really like the company but with the holidays and everything coming around and i just i feel like they shouldn't have shipped the plants during the polar vortex i just assumed that they would hold on to them i read through all their shipping and everything and i guess it was just a miscommunication i misunderstood maybe uh but it seemed to me that they wouldn't ship the plants when it's like 10 15 20 i don't know how cold it was it was pretty cold outside when they shipped them and i also for some reason thought when i placed the order again i could be misremembering it's been a little while but i thought that it said that it would take like several days for the order to process and then they would ship these shipped like within days of placing the order very quickly which is fantastic and i love that but not the most opportune timing especially considering it was much colder in connecticut than it was here i'm in st louis they have like a chart on their website that outlines like general rules for shipping during winter i'm in zone am which they consider or they put down as should be warm enough this is an exception 
it was very cold outside and I just, I figured that by the time the plants shipped out, that cold would be long gone. They probably thought the same thing too, would be my guess. I don't know. It, you know, it is what it is. Uh, again, not thrilled with this experience, but all of my others have been really great. It's the thing with mail ordering plants, right? There's actually only been one company that I've ordered from. People ask me very often where I order plants from and I pretty much always say the same thing which is that I uh, have yet to find a place that has never let me down so I don't like to make recommendations because of that because I don't want to suggest somebody order from a place and then something like this happen this is not normal and this is not at all representative of logies but there have been plenty of other places. Josh's Frogs, great example. I got an order from them back in November. Plants looked pretty good. I'm not thrilled with the way the plants are rooted. Here's one of those plants I got from Josh's Frogs. They shipped fine. I have heard from other plant tubers that there are some issues with the shipping. Everything arrived looking okay. But my main issue was that basically I paid for a plug. This has... I've had this for a few months, so any roots that are in there, I would assume have grown, hopefully within the last few months. I don't like paying full price for something that hasn't even been rooted into its new container. There's always good and there's always bad. So for me, the shipping was okay with the order from Josh's Frogs. It hasn't always been the case for other people. But what's that about? I mean, come on now. That's not right. Don't do that. If you're going to sell me something, at least take the time to root the plant in. And like I mentioned, I've had this for a couple months, so most of that growth that's in there, it's more than likely my doing, not theirs. I didn't, I didn't pay the money for me to have to do all the work. I don't think so. Uh-uh, get out of here. Although, okay, there is one uh, online nursery that I have ordered from many times and never been disappointed with the quality of the plants, and that's Plant Delights Nursery. Uh, there was been occasions where I was a little bit surprised by how small a plant arrived, but they are pretty transparent in their descriptions about how big their plants are going to be, but then there's always like that glimmer of hope that maybe they'll send you one of the bigger ones. So I don't hold that against them at all, because like I said, they're transparent about that. Like with a lot of the plants on their site, it'll say like, you know, these plants are small, these plants are really big and ready to be bumped up aside, side, size, you, you get what I'm saying. Point being, you can't win them all. This wasn't a great experience. I ordered 10 plants. I think I may have said nine before because I forgot about the Syngonium inside. And uh, five arrived. Not great. Although the Jungle Boogie I thought was okay until like a day or two later and it wasn't looking too good. And another five are okay. So 50%, not great, but also not typical. Not typical at all. And they do offer shipping with insulated packages during winter. They're easy to communicate with. So if you want to place an order with them, I know that if you were to email Logies and be like, hey, here's what I want to do, I'm a little bit hesitant, or maybe the shipping is a little bit confusing, they'll walk you through it, they'll guide you through it. And like I said, had I not just dropped off from those emails, because like, like I said, I was a little bit annoyed, more than likely had I gone and contacted them, I would have gotten a refund or an exchange. I don't know why they wouldn't, but again, based off of the pictures that I sent them, I just felt like that was all very unnecessary. The plants, you see the pictures there and the video. That's not something time's going to fix when it comes to the money that was spent on the plants. Cause I, you know, you pay for healthy plants. Yeah, okay, so there it is. The good, the bad, the ugly, just the reality of online shopping, unfortunately, sometimes. This is not something I experience often with ordering plants online. And it's unfortunate that it had to be through Logies because I, I, I really like Logies. Back on the little spiel there about the underdeveloped, unrooted plants, I remember like three years ago, I want to say, I got a, uh, what was it? It was a crepe myrtle. I can't remember the variety. I knew it was a crepe myrtle. Either way, it was in, uh, I believe, a five gallon pot from Home Depot. I got that thing home, pulled it out of the pot to plant it, and it pulled up just a perfect little one gallon size root ball from inside that five gallon pot. I was so mad because a one gallon crepe myrtle is normally like six or seven dollars. A five gallon crepe myrtle, usually anywhere from like, I don't know, $19.99 to 40 bucks, depending on what it is. So I didn't, I bought a plant that should have had the root system of a five gallon plant for the price of that, and then instead ended up with what is actually a like seven dollar plant. 
that's not okay. And that's how I feel with unrooted plugs. Root your plugs. This is fine. This is standard in growing. You start things off in plugs and propagation trays. Cool. Whatever. That's what you're supposed to do. But then when you pop them on up into these containers to sell them, you got to wait a minute. You give it a little bit of time for them to fill this thing out. The root mass to me is definitely relevant to what you spend on the plant right? Because that has a lot to do with the way the plant's going to perform, the speed at which it's going to perform. A plant that's in a two inch container like this, if it's fully rooted into this, then I would expect much quicker growth out of it. Something that's in a plug like this, no, because it has to fill out a small container first before bumping it up into anything bigger or else those roots aren't going to have access to water. Don't be taking my money. I don't appreciate that. And with the booming plant craze, I think that some of that just has to do with rushing to get things propagated and out for sale because I've noticed it being a problem more and more over these last couple of years. So there's, you know, some good and some bad. A little bit of ugly that you have to deal with with the growing trends and plants. I think give it some time. I don't know about from Josh's Frogs, but like from Home Depot, Lowe's, those sorts of places. Hopefully that doesn't happen too often. I have picked some things up before from those stores, like just little plants that were pretty much the same situation. Or like you can get little four inch pothos plants and you'll look at it and be like, this is just... Like, it's literally just the stems and nodes stuck into a container, and it's up to me to root this. No, no, root your own plants. That's not the consumer's job. Don't be lazy. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's everything. That's what happened. It's, like I said, there's no tea. There's no drama. I like Logies. I'll order from them again. I suggest other people order from them because they're a great company. They're family-owned. Just, you know, sometimes stuff happens is what it is granted had this been my first order from them i would surely be singing a different tune but I, this i'm not new with them there have been plenty of plenty of plants received from logis over the years and never an issue until yeah and it's somewhat two-sided like i said i probably should have waited to place the order but i don't know i was just under the impression that it w wouldn't ship out or by the time it did ship out that cold front will be gone because it's not normally that cold in november here i don't know about the weather in connecticut but that's not that's not up to me to figure that out that's that's for them and typically never been a problem and on that i have ordered from them during winter before and it wasn't an issue so the tetrasperma like i said typically I've heard not always great shippers, but like this, this was a bit extreme, I would say. And the jungle boogie, it took a while to show cold damage, but it does, it shows a lot of promise for recovering. But again, when, if I were to see this at a nursery, I wouldn't pay full price for it. This is a clearance plant. That is a clearance plant. That is a clearance plant. These are not full price plants. And this is them after some time to recover by the way this had pretty much completely defoliated and this down here is all new that's all new growth but that's not really anything to be excited about either is it no no it's really not okay that's enough of that you're coming off the tripod about to go on another ride here we go because it's time for a poblano update it's just sort of become a thing we'll talk about it every week there they are. They're getting pretty big. Much larger than I would have expected for an indoor plant. And it has new flowers on it. It's actually covered in little tiny baby buds. You can see them coming out the center here, especially if the camera would focus. Do you want to focus? No, yes, kind of. You can see that. Lots of buds in there, really all over the plant. So I would say that if anybody was wondering about my thoughts on the new lighting, I would say uh, I like it. Was that too much? Oh, but it didn't just make anybody sick. But that's that's very promising. The amazel basil's flowering over here, which is great. The amazel basil, you don't have to pluck the flowers off. Since it's inside, I really probably should take the flowers off just because that's a lot of energy the plant's putting into this flower when it doesn't need it. Uh, a, a typical basil, them going into flower can affect the flavor, but not with the amazel and it smells absolutely wonderful it has another flower over here to take off so i'd say the plant setup's good i don't think i gave an update on the persian shield last week did i i don't know i don't think i did look at it there it is it's getting pretty darn big and bushy actually considering this was just sticks not too terribly long ago 
lots of good growth coming out of it. It overall seems to be really happy and I am surprised that the growth isn't stretched on this. I was expecting this to have really lanky kind of awkward growth under grow lights because I don't know outside that happens if I don't get them just the right amount of sun but no look at it it's doing great. Our kids are good this is the maxillaria back there that aglaonemia is doing better since I finally wrestled it out of that Walmart pot that it was like latched inside of. It was so hard to get this thing out of that plastic pot. There was no drainage hole in there so I had to get it out. And then I do have some other maculatas over here from uh, the Trending Tropicals collection and they're doing great. Everything, all the all the plants are really happy. Uh, the the Logis plants may be uh, not necessarily the same situation but they're recovering and they'll be okay. Got some fresh growth coming out of the Jerkenia back here. The Limelight I believe is the variety on that one. One of my favorites and I can never remember if it's Lemon Lime or Limelight. Pretty sure it's Limelight though. They're really lovely foliage. I mean it's just a Dracania but it's a really pretty one and yes there's still DE powder on there. Like I said it's gonna take a few waterings for that to fully come off. I'm not concerned about that. I don't think there are any other updates to give. Vanda orchids having a little bit of a drink. They're good. They're doing what Vanda orchids do. Uh, hibiscus. Yeah look at that. Hibiscus are blooming. They seem to be enjoying things an awful lot back here. This is the seminal pink. How did this just turn into a garden tour? That's not what's supposed to be happening here. They're doing well. I wasn't sure about that when I put it over there. I thought I might need to lower those lights down, but the branches, the growth isn't stretched or anything like that. I think it's good. Now, what have some of your experiences been with mail ordering plants? This, you know, one of the great things about the YouTube, the plant tube, is that you get a nice variety of people able to say this was great, this was bad and uh, kind of weigh things out on your own. You can make your own assessments, get a better picture of places that maybe are great, maybe not so great, places people will say they love and then other people will say to about that same place that they just hate it. So comment down below, <laughs> let's do some of that. I mean, it's always good to keep things positive though, right? But obviously still need to be honest about our experiences. That's of course important. Because I know that there are a lot of people out there who don't have nurseries they can go to during the winter time, they either they just don't have any nurseries near them, period. Or they close down during winter. My favorite nursery here closes down during winter and it makes me very sad, but they'll be open in a few weeks. I think they open up March 1st, that's Greenscape. So there are plenty of people out there who have to rely on mail order during the winter time. It'd be really helpful to those people to leave some suggestions down below. I almost knocked you into the water. But anyways, hope everybody's having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. <laughs> My social media link down below in the description of the video. I use Instagram like way, way, way more than anything else. If you could like the video, that makes a really big difference for the videos and for the channel. I do appreciate it and thank you for it and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out. It was a slow week for videos over here on the channel. I'm sorry about that. The There were a lot of issues with last weekend's upload on YouTube's end and by the time I got those things fixed it was the day after the vlog was supposed to... it was just a big old mess. Thank you by the way Speaking of that video, so many people were so incredibly positive and kind and I didn't, the, I wasn't like feeling bad about anything in that video, but people still had such incredibly kind and positive things to say and I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. I, it wasn't unnoticed at all. A couple of those comments actually made me a little bit teary because they were so nice. So I thank you again. Such a lovely community, just the plant peeps, everybody nerding out, having fun together over these things. I really am just crazy about the color on this one. Isn't that just beautiful? With every plant I've had on this table during this video, my eye still keeps being drawn right over here to this one. The colors are right up my alley. It's giving me warm tropical like tequila sunset kind of vibes, but with more pink. I don't think there's pink in a ticket. You get what I'm saying. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Always fun doing the plant nerd stuff together. I appreciate all of you very, very much. You're so awesome. Such great people. I know that this wasn't a typical vlog, you know, where I'm out doing stuff. It was just kind of sitting around looking at the plants, which is how last week's vlog ended too. But that's not normal to anyone who's new here. Usually the weekend vlogs, the Saturday vlog, there's like things happening and stuff going on. But it was pretty darn cold outside and I just I didn't really feel like going out and doing anything and this was all you know, I needed to get through this anyways so that's all done. I hope everybody's having a good time a good weekend. Again comment down below say hi what's going on with your plants. 
favorite places to order from. And, uh, you know, you can just keep it real. Nothing wrong with that. So everybody's respectful, right? All right. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.